The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed in the following program are strictly those of the hosts or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive with Dr. Rebecca Risk. Do you ever feel that even though nothing seems seriously wrong and you pass all the medical tests, that you still feel that your health, pain, and fatigue are completely out of control? It doesn't have to be that way. Listen to the tips and suggestions given on our program today and take back control of your health. Now, here is Dr. Rebecca Risk. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Today, we're speaking with Dr. John Colbert. For over 20 years, he has practiced medicine in Central Florida. He has been board certified in family practice for over 25 years and specializes in anti-aging medicine. He is also a New York Times bestselling author and has written over 40 books. Today, we're discussing two of his books, Let Food Be Your Medicine and Dr. Colbert's Keto Zone Diet, which will be released in September. So, Dr. Colbert, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great being here. So, how did you get involved in in medicine and and writing about everything? Well, first of all, uh, I got involved in medicine because I've been interested in health and nutrition since I was a teenager. And I saw my uh, grandfather develop severe arthritis and eventually committed suicide. He's in such bad pain, riddled with arthritis all over his body. But it wasn't rheumatoid, it was just the osteoarthritis due to the horrible diet he was on. I watched my uncle uh, develop severe diabetes, severe obesity, and have both legs amputated and then die a year later in his early 60s from just diabetes, from eating the wrong foods. So it's been my passion for decades to uh, simply help people by initially starting with the most important thing, which is the diet. And uh, the diet is the, the key for helping to prevent as well as reverse so many diseases. So when did you realize how important food was? Well, I realized it young, but then I realized for myself, because I developed an autoimmune disease back in the early 90s, which was psoriasis. One day I woke up and I was covered with a rash that itched like crazy. And I didn't know what it was. I thought it was scabies I'd caught from a patient. So I took the scabies medicine and I was worse the next day. And then finally I saw a good friend of mine who's a dermatologist. And I'll never forget what he said. He, He had these glasses pulled down on his nose and he looked at my rash and then he just shook his head. And he says, Don, I'm sorry to inform you, you have the heartbreak, and and the word heartbreak came out of his mouth, the heartbreak of psoriasis. And I said, no, that's impossible. I can't have psoriasis. No one in my family has psoriasis, and my heart hasn't been broken. He shook his head and said, I don't care, you have it. And then he prescribed this coal tar ointment that smelled like tar that you would tar a road or a roof. And I had to put this orange coal tar on my body and it, it smelled horrible. You could smell me from, you know, 100 yards away. And it also stained everything I put on, orange, including my sheets and my clothing. And so finally I got to a point where I said, that's it. I said, uh, I'm going I'm to figure this out. And then I started studying, reading, going to seminars. And I finally figured out that my body was having a major reaction to certain foods that were inflaming my GI tract, my small intestines, creating tremendous inflammation in my gut, and which was being reflected in my skin. And when I eliminated some key foods, within three months, the psoriasis was gone, gone. And so from then, I've helped uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people with many, many different, not just psoriasis, most every disease, find the foods that are triggering and fueling their diseases, and then putting them on a program to literally help to many times uh, either improve or reverse the disease. And that's why I came out with the... 
and, and that's where I came out with the anti-inflammatory diet and the ketogenic diet, as well as the 21-day detox, which is more of a vegetarian diet, because there's not one diet that fits everyone. Well, you know, I definitely agree on that. But, you know, looking back at at your grandfather's story, um, you know, you can see now that it was probably caused by the diet that he was eating. But did anybody um, say that to him to help him reduce his inflammation? No, not at all. They just put him on all these arthritis meds, pain meds, and all they did is help to turn down his symptoms without addressing the main cause of the problem. And that's what so many meds do. They can cause depression. They can cause all these horrible side effects. And in fact, adverse reactions to meds are the third leading cause of death in this country. Now, I'm not against meds, but I'm just telling you too many doctors are prescribing too many meds with too many side effects and causing so many more problems when really we need to get to the root of the problem, which is almost always... The food, certain foods are inflaming the body and inflaming the gut. Remove those foods and then simply start eating the proper anti-inflammatory foods and rotating the foods. So many people eat the very same foods every day. When you do that, you are asking for inflammation in your gut and in your body, even if you eat healthy foods. So um, what is the biggest issue that you see with your patients? Uh, the biggest issue is uh, by far, by far, I would say, obesity and the diseases that come from obesity and inflammation, eating just inflammatory foods. And so, again, uh, we have a huge weight problem in this country with uh, over two-thirds of Americans are overweight or obese, over a third are obese. And it's projected that by 2050, over one half of Americans will be obese. So we are not correcting the problem. Now, as a result of choosing to be obese, and you say, wait, you're choosing. How are you choosing? When you eat certain foods, you unknowingly uh, choose to be obese. And so I'll get into that later. But diseases that stem from obesity are, are diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Uh, as well as acid reflux, sleep apnea, uh, autoimmune diseases actually from the inflammation cause, cancers, obesity is associated with more cancer, especially breast cancer in women, as well as uh, over 35 major diseases are associated with ob- being obese. So that's the root cause of so many problems and so many of the patients I see is they they're obese, and uh, they're eating the very foods that are trapping them in the obese um, in, in obesity. So one of the things that, that I know from experience, and I think that most people listening to this know kind of the, where we're going to go in this conversation. We're going to talk about foods that cause inflammation. And one of the biggest things that happens to people that haven't approached this before is, oh, I can't give up blank. And so yeah. what, do you, what do you say to people <laughs> that, you know, are emotionally attached or they're addicted to whatever it is? And how do you help them overcome that? A very good question, and just like uh, I saw a patient this past week who uh, who had a, a horrible disease, and in fact she had a uh, disease with elevated platelets, young lady, and she was yet smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, and I said, you know, you really need to stop smoking, even if you have to take the medicine. She said, can't stop smoking, I, I love it, I'm addicted, I say we well, increase risk of stroke. Well, the same thing with the obese patients and people that crave foods, like, the, you know, the most commonly craved food is sugar generally, mm-hmm. some form of sugar or starch. And the reason being is because these foods in, in mice and rat studies, the foods, the uh, rats actually um, prefer sugar more than cocaine or heroin. And it's that addictive. They say that sugar is actually more addictive than cocaine or heroin. So what happens when you eat sugar, it binds to these opioid receptors and we get addicted to it. And so we crave it and we crave more of it. And as a result, it affects neurotransmitters in the brain. It affects insulin levels, hormonal levels, uh, and all of these 
factors interplay that get us so addicted to this food that we have to have it. We have to have it about every four hours or else we get a, a sugar crash, see? So good question. What we have to do is we have to first go through some sugar withdrawals, and people don't like it, just like a drug addict. And so we have to inform them what to expect, but we have to also inform them, do they want to keep their disease? Do they want to sign up for heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, and all the side effects that come with it? Or do they want to go ahead and uh, start the process of weaning off the sugar and the carbs? Now, let me explain something. So many people don't realize starch and carbohydrates, excessive amounts, is just like eating sugar. Like potatoes, mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, you might as well be eating sugar. Grains, corn, processed corn, and wheat, and rice, especially, especially white rice, it converts to sugar. And so that's why in my book, The Ketogenic Diet, I talk about these carbs and starches. It's, it's garbage or like garbage for our bodies when we eat excessive amounts of that. Now, if we can eat the whole grain variety, small amounts, the size of a tennis ball, generally causes no harm unless they're type 2 diabetic or unless they want to lose weight. Then we have to go a step further. So um, um, when we're looking at you know, food and all of this causing inflammation and, and there is that process of, of getting through, of course, the addiction part. Um, and then what do should people expect to see once they can get past that? Well, what will happen is uh, they'll start having more energy. They'll start uh, generally losing weight. They'll decrease inflammation in the body. As a result, most pain will start to diminish and many times subside. They'll also uh, have clearer skin, uh, many times headaches, and all these symptoms like fatigue, headaches, brain fog start to lift, and people just overall feel much better. So on on the overall, um, is it everybody that you see that that you feel needs to tidy up their, their diet? Is there certain illnesses that you see that more with, or is it important for everybody? Well, again, if people want to feel their best and uh, be able to perform their best, they need to start cleaning up their diet. If they're eating a lot of sugar, a lot of carbs, a lot of inflammatory oils, they're inviting inflammation in their body. Sugar fuels, uh, increases inflammation. Excessive carbohydrates and starches increase inflammation. Bad fats. What are bad fats? Well, trans fats or hydrogenated fats are horrible fats. Deep fried foods are horrible fats that invite inflammation in the body. And also a fat that every, most everyone eats every day are polyunsaturated fats. They create tremendous inflammation in the body, such as corn oil, sunflower oil, oil safflower oil, soybean oil, most vegetable oils. They create inflammation. They're in most every salad dressing. They're in the foods that restaurants serve, especially fast food restaurants, because they're cheap inflammatory oils. So that's why we have to identify these foods, and we have to best eliminate or at least diminish their consumption dramatically. Um, you know, it, it, it's uh, the more that we, you know, that I've looked into food, and the more you're talking about it, it um, it seems like we just need a, a complete cultural revamp on all the things that that we have been consuming and changing our, our salad dressing so it is okay to have it and um, making it easier and more accessible for people to eat well. Yes, and, and giving them good choices like olive oil, extra virgin olive oil is so healthy healthy for you, take it a step further, get organic, but it's much more expensive than these cheap seed oils like soy, uh, soybean oil and all these other seed type oils that they put in dressings, canola oil, that's just cheap inflammatory oil that's genetically modified, the majority of it, and so uh, using either avocado oil, uh, extra virgin olive oil, these are highly anti-inflammatory oils that we can choose for our salads with some apple cider vinegar. Now, you may have to get at the health food store. You may have to make your own. You're usually not going to find it at the grocery store, but you'll do so much more for your health if you start choosing simply the right oils. That um, sounds like good advice. We're going to take a quick break. We're talking today uh, with Dr. Don Colbert. We're discussing two of his books, Let Food Be Your Medicine and Dr. Colbert's Keto Zone Diet. And we'll be back shortly.
your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. These days, everyone is looking for information on staying young, healthy, and fit. The Voice America Health and Wellness Network is here to help you on your quest to better health and a better you. We talk about everything from diet, fitness, and aging to substance abuse, personal growth, mental health, and much more. Learn from our experts who cover health and wellness from traditional and holistic perspectives. Tune in to the Voice America Health and Wellness Network. Healthy living starts here. Have you become a member yet? Sign up now to become a member of Voice America. It's always free and easy. Plus, you get to take advantage of some great member benefits. Get unlimited access to millions of hours of on-demand content across all of our channels. Keep track of your favorite episodes, shows, and hosts in your own customizable library. Find out what shows you might be interested in based on your favorites. Plus, you get insider access with our newsletter. Membership gives you more. Sign up at voiceamerica.com and click register at the top right. Have you had a chance to check out Voice America's online magazine and blog, Press Pass? If you love our hosts and shows, check out articles that give an even deeper perspective. Plus, topics about health and fitness, movie reviews, philosophy, business tips and tactics, spirituality, positive thought, current events, and even more about your favorite host. It's just a click away at VAPressPass.com. That's VAPressPass.com. VA Press Pass by Voice America. All access, all the time. Follow the Voice America Talk Radio Network on Twitter. We're at Voice America TRN. You'll get the latest fix on what's happening with our shows, this week's featured guests, and general happenings that you should know about at the Voice America Talk Radio Network. Now you don't have to miss anything when you're away from your home or office. Just go to twitter.com forward slash Voice America TRN or follow along with us at Voice America TRN. The Voice America Talk Radio network we're on the cutting edge of social media can you keep up a fresh look at today's health voice america health and wellness you are listening to falling through the cracks with your host dr rebecca risk to reach the program today please call in to 1-866-472-5792 again that's 1-866-472-5792 you may also send an email directly to dr risk the email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com now back to falling through the cracks feel alive and thrive Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Falling Through the Cracks. Today, we're talking with Dr. Don Colbert, and we're discussing two of his books, Let Food Be Your Medicine and Dr. Colbert's Keto Zone Diet. And, and Dr. Colbert, um, I guess one thing is these books are quite different, and they're, they're different anti-inflammatory diets. And can you just explain why you're focusing on more than one way to help people? Absolutely. Uh, First of all, Let Food Be Your Medicine is based on an anti-inflammatory diet. That's a great introduction for anyone with any inflammatory disease or just wanting to lose weight or feel healthy or or if they have uh, nuisance-type symptoms of fatigue, brain fog, rashes. This will get them on the right path as well as I'll talk about different diseases and such as diabetes and heart disease and autoimmune disease and dementia and cancer and what are the best dietary formats to follow for those individual diseases. Now, this, like I say, is mainly just introducing anti-inflammatory foods into the diet and then avoiding or minimizing and identifying the inflammatory foods. So this will get people on the right track, right path. Now then, uh, this book that I've done, which is Dr. Colbert's Ketogenic Diet, is a step further. And what this does, it actually shifts the metabolism from burning sugar to burning fat as the primary fuel. In doing so, this diet is ideal for people needing, needing to lose weight. It's ideal for type 2 diabetics. It's ideal for advanced cancer patients. It's ideal for patients with dementia. And it's also very good for preventing heart disease and uh, for autoimmune disease. So it's like taking a step further. It's like we start them with, uh, you know, a a book that's kind of like going to high school and then going to college or graduate school. It's more difficult to start on the ketogenic diet for many people. 
but we can start with the anti-inflammatory. But if they have certain diseases that we need to stop in their tracks and start reversing, that's where we step it up a notch, and we go ketogenic, shifting the metabolism. Now, it takes about three to five days to enter into ketosis. So I have to uh, explain to patients what we're doing is we're shifting your metabolism from burning sugar or carbohydrates to burning fats as your primary fuel. When, when you shift over, if you go through some little um, symptoms that I help people get through by drinking plenty of water, but that's what I explain in my book because you get some symptoms because going from the shift from burning sugar to burning fat. And these symptoms may include a little fatigue, a little brain fog, and things like this that are minor. But then once they enter into ketosis, it's like everything gets, usually gets better. The blood sugar drops, the weight starts to drop, the mental clarity improves, the energy improves, people don't need as much sleep, and they just are in a, they're in a fat-burning state. Um, so, yeah, it, sound, it sounds like they are very different, and I think that's important because everybody is different. And, you know, it, there's um, trends right now talking about how, um, you know, the certain protein and ketosis and ketogenic diets are good, and, and then on the other side, vegetarian diets are studying to be very good. And, um, and you know, I think that what's happening is that we're all different. We all have different needs, and exactly. different things work for different people. That's exactly true. And I still use vegetarian diets for certain patients. Certain patients thrive on vegetarian diets. Certain of my psoriasis patients actually do much better with vegetarian rather than ketogenic. Others do much better with ketogenic. Others do better with anti-inflammatory. So it's finding the right program for the right person, and everyone's different. That's what I find. Everyone has different food sensitivities. And what we find is many diseases share similar food sensitivities. By sensitivity, I mean certain foods are inflaming their small intestines and creating increased intestinal permeability, which is causing inflammation in their gut and inflammation in their body. It could be in their skin, causing inflammation associated with psoriasis. It could be in their joints, causing inflammation associated with arthritis. Or it could be in their arteries, causing inflammation, creating plaque in the arteries. Or it could be in the brain, causing inflammation, causing memory loss, dementia. And so uh, inflammation affects everyone, every organ differently. And when there's inflammation in the arteries, guess what? You don't feel pain. When there's inflammation in the joints, you have swollen, painful, hot, red, tender joints and stiffness. When you have uh, inflammation in the skin, you have a red, ra itchy rash or inflamed rash. That's how psoriasis is. So it, it aff affects every organ and tissue a little differently. So when you're talking about food sensitivities, what, what really do you mean by that? Well, food sensitivity is different from food intolerance. A food intolerance is uh, you eat a food and it causes GI symptoms like diarrhea or something like that or gas or bloating uh, or it like lactose intolerance. That's where you drink milk and you get diarrhea because you don't have the lactase enzyme. That's intolerance. Then there's food allergies where you eat a certain food like common foods that trigger food allergies or shellfish, peanuts, you know, that's why a lot of airlines don't serve peanuts because people get allergic reactions, they can get hives, urticaria, angioedema, anaphylaxis, and so that's an allergy, a food allergy, but then you have food sensitivities. That's where certain foods create inflammation, in the, generally in the small intestines, creating a condition called increased intestinal permeability, where food proteins are not digested into their individual peptides and amino acids, but the whole food protein is absorbed, creating an inflammatory response in the gut and in the body and creating inflammation in certain areas of the body. That's what a food sensitivity is. Now, these symptoms can include also bloating and gas and rashes and fatigue and brain fog and headaches and, all, and joint pains and all sorts of symptoms, see. So when um, 
how do people find out that that's what's causing their and their issues, their symptoms? Very good question. You can find out a few ways. Number one, you can do a fast. Some people will go on a fast. Some people will do what we call our 21-day detox. I have a 21-day detox program where I remove 90, 90 to 95% of the inflammatory foods and food sensitivities, and most of the symptoms go away. Or you can do, actually do certain food sensitivity tests. They have lab tests that are blood tests that you can draw and it'll show you if you're sensitive to a food and if you're severely sensitive, moderately sensitive or mildly sensitive or not sensitive at all. And and then um, what, does somebody just remove the foods and then watch their symptoms clear up or is there a different process? Good question. And what we do, if a person's highly sensitive, severely or moderately sensitive, yes, we remove those foods for approximately six months. If they're mildly sensitive, we rotate those foods every three or four days. And and then after six months of avoiding the foods they're highly sensitive to, they can generally uh, start rotating those foods every four days, and they may not, they usually don't cause symptoms. But if they do introduce those foods and they cause symptoms, they'll have to eliminate them. And that's what happened to me. I was highly sensitive to tomatoes and peppers and gluten, which is wheat. So I eliminated wheat, I eliminated peppers and tomatoes, and then uh, after six months, I could eat tomatoes and peppers and rotate it, just not every day, no problem. But it took me years to eliminate wheat before I reset it, and finally, I can have a little wheat now, it won't hurt me, see? But before, it'd flare me right up, I'd still break out with psoriasis. Now it doesn't happen. Well, and um, so what's the process of us having um, being sensitive to something and then it not being sensitive? Is that the inflammation clearing up? Yes, a good question. And what it is, it's a combination of things. Number one, when you avoid those foods, see, every time you eat a food you're highly sensitive to, you are creating more inflammation in your gut and you're not enabling your GI tract to repair the microscopic damage done or the impaired intestinal permeability. So when you avoid these foods, you diminish the inflammation, you enable the gut to repair, and then you're able to eventually turn off or turn down significantly the inflammation and uh, usually relieve the symptoms uh, dramatically. So um, once somebody's done, the, figured out um, the, the food sensitivities, is there other foods that they should be looking at or changes just to keep the inflammation down? Oh, very good question. Yes, yeah, certain foods absolutely help with inflammation. And uh, these are generally, you know, your veggies, your all different kinds of vegetables, as well as uh, berries. And again, I tell people, be careful with fruit. Fruit, if you eat too much fruit, it's just like eating too much sugar. But berries are low in fruit, loaded with antioxidants and fiber, and they are uh, wonderful anti-inflammatory uh, foods for the body, as well as our oils, our healthy anti-inflammatory oils like fish oil and salmon, as well, uh, you know, of course, wild Alaskan salmon is the best, not farm-raised salmon, extra virgin organic olive oil, avocados, as well as your nuts, as long as you're not allergic to the nuts, of course, and then those leafy veggies are so important, you know, the, the kale and the... Um, you know, the arugula and the field greens and the romaine and cabbage and things like that are so healthy for you. And then, um, so when you're working on the, the keto diet, and that's obviously different than your anti-inflammatory diet, how do you balance the, car- the carbs with people? Oh, very good question, because with the keto diet, what we have to do is remove the sugar, and we generally have to lower the carb intake to around 20 grams a day. And so when we lower the carb intake to 20 grams a day, we are eliminating every grain, all corn, all wheat, all rice, all oats, as well as all potatoes and sweet potatoes and beans and peas and lentils. And we're eating primarily veggies, green veggies, you know, and your leafy green veggies, olive oil, lots of olive oil. Uh, the only fruits we allow are generally the berries, any berry, but only a quarter cup a day, which is just a small amount of carbs. It's only about five grams of carbs. And, uh, and then we, we literally, about 70% of our diet is going to be healthy fats. 
And then we have a little bit of protein. About 10 to 15% of the diet is protein. So it's mild to moderate amount of protein, not large amount of protein, but healthy sources of protein. And uh, that puts you in a ketogenic state. And it's real simple, and I discuss it in detail in my ketogenic diet book. What, what is the ketogenic state? Well, the ketogenic state is a state in which your meta- metabolism shifts from burning sugar and starches and carbs to burning fat as the fuel. Now, when that happens, uh, the body starts usually to burn the belly fat first as fuel. So, in other words, you're going to be taking in about 70% of your calories as fat, in the form of extra virgin olive oil, avocados, avocado oil, nuts like almonds and almond butter, and, uh, as well as pecans and other nuts, as well as uh, some, um, some grass-fed butter, excuse me, MCT oil, which is median chain triglyceride oil, or MCT oil powder, which I put in my coffee, and it helps you, it, it lowers cholesterol and it helps you burn fat and it keeps you in ketosis. And uh, those are the primary fats that you're going to be eating and it's going to enable you to burn fat. I use a lot of olive oil. I use olive oil with apple cider vinegar. I put it all over my salad, not just a tablespoon. I put like three tablespoons or more of extra virgin olive oil. And um, by doing this, you're able to, uh, it satisfies you, you're full. And you're full not just for, you know, three or four hours. You're full for five or six hours when you have adequate fats. So it turns down these appetite hormones. And the biggest thing it does, it lowers insulin. So many patients have high, you know, elevated blood sugar or just regular blood sugar, but high insulin levels. When your insulin levels are high, you're going to be on a sugar roller coaster. You're going to have to have carbs or sugars every three to four hours or you're going to be hungry because it's the insulin that unleashes a ravenous appetite. But when you go into ketogenic state, you lower that insulin level to usually less than seven, many times less than three. When that happens, your body starts burning fat and you also, it turns the appetite down dramatically and literally, you are living in the ketogenic state where it's the optimal state for health. Um, that sounds like where we all want to be. So we're going to take yes, a but, quick break. We're talking okay. to... Yeah, sorry. We're going to take a break. We're talking to Dr. Don Colbert. And we're discussing two of his books, Let Food Be Your Medicine and Dr. Colbert's Keto Zone Diet. We'll be back shortly. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. Tune in to the Voice America Variety Channel on the Voice America Talk Radio Network. Voice America Variety broadcasts a diverse array of topics reaching a global community. Our experts come from all walks of life, and the topics they discuss are everything from current events, arts and entertainment, leadership, parenting, relationships, self-improvement, career advice, and a variety of other topics. Check us out today. You're sure to find something of interest. Voice America Variety. Talk on today's hot topics. The Voice America Live Events Channel is here now to showcase your corporate, individual, or organization's live event. Visit voiceamerica.com forward slash live events to see all of our past live events and find out more. Whether it's a multi-day conference, special speaker, or single day event, we've got everything to make your event a success. We can do a few hours or a few days. For more information about taking your event to the next level, call Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417 or email info at voiceamerica.com. Again, that's Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417 or send us an email to info at voiceamerica.com. Voice America is where you are and where you want to be. Join us around the globe as we broadcast live from some of the most interesting events available. Don't forget to view all our live events, including on-demand access to past events that you may have missed by visiting voiceamerica.com forward slash live events. 
What sets apart VoiceAmerica.tv from the other video content providers on the Internet? Choice and flexibility means that you can host your video content live or on demand on the main VoiceAmerica.tv channels through your own branded media player or your own private TV channel. We support multiple media formats, so all of your video content can be in one place. We offer a number of advertising and video packages. For more information, visit VoiceAmerica.tv. If you think you've seen online TV like this before, let us surprise you. Take us on the go. It's even easier now. The Voice America Talk Radio Network has launched our mobile app for iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry. Visit the Apple iTunes App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market to download the app powered by Aircast. It's free and no registration is necessary. In minutes, you could be enjoying your favorite Voice America Talk Radio host, no matter where you are, in the car, out and about, while traveling, or anytime you can't be close to your computer. Catch up on the archives you've missed or discover new shows on the spot. Search Voice America at your favorite app store. Opinions, options, answers. Voice America Health and Wellness. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Falling Through the Cracks. Today we're talking with Dr. Don Colbert and we're discussing two of his books, Let Food Be Your Medicine and Dr. Colbert's Keto Zone Diet. So Dr. Colbert, before the break you were talking about um, sugar cravings and and insulin levels and of course that has to do a lot with weight loss. Um, Why is weight loss so important for inflammation? Well, first of all, when a person's overweight, that fat, especially belly fat, is highly inflammatory. It actually secretes inflammatory mediators called cytokines, such as C-reactive protein that constricts the arteries and unleashes inflammation throughout the body, triggering pain for many people, as well as other uh, inflammatory components that will cause problems and symptoms. But going back to insulin, insulin and sugar and carbs are so important. So to kind of make this where people can understand it, it's important that I explain how insulin works in the body. Whenever a person eats any sugar, carbohydrates, starches, you know, any kind of grain, bread, potatoes, anything like that, or sugar, sodas, the the pancreas, the beta cells of the pancreas uh, release insulin. The higher the amount of sugar, the more insulin. Now, many times, the body, if, it, if, it, if you have a soda without any fiber, without anything else, it'll release a tremendous amount of insulin, and that insulin goes up, and the sugar, when the insulin goes up, the sugar comes down. But what happens, that insulin level stays elevated. So when the, when the sugar goes down, then the body uh, starts to crave sugar because the blood sugar, when it goes down, you... The, the body sends hunger signals to eat. So every three, every, and if you have a soda, that hunger signal is going to come in about an hour and a half to two hours. If you have, you know, a donut or a bagel or something like that, that's a lot of carbs. So in about, again, two to three hours, that sugar is going to bottom out because you create a lot of insulin, the, the sugar goes low, and then it releases a ravenous appetite. So people get on this sugar roller coaster, but what's happening is the insulin level is staying elevated. When the insulin level stays elevated, you are programmed to store fat and not burn fat. And that's where so many people are. That's why they're so frustrated. They go to the gym, they exercise, yet they don't lose any fat. They may gain a little muscle, but they don't lose fat because that insulin level is high and it's programming their body for fat storage. And it actually causes their body to resist burning fat even when they exercise. And that's where so many people are. And then when that happens, they get frustrated, their cortisol levels go up, which causes even more fat, so they actually get fatter as they exercise. Now, here's the key, and here's what you have to do, and this is where the keto zone, when you get in the keto zone, you are in your sweet spot for weight loss. That's when your body shifts from burning sugar and carbs and garbage and starches to burning fat as fuel. Now, when this happens, 
and you get into ketosis by lowering your carb intake to around 20 grams a day, all of a sudden that insulin level goes from high around 20, 30, 40, down to about 10, down to 7. All of a sudden when you hit 7, all, there you go. That's the level where your body's really able to burn fat. Now, very few doctors check insulin levels. If you are not losing weight and you're following a program, please insist that your doctor check your insulin levels. If your insulin level is above 10, forget it. You're not going to burn fat. If it gets to 7, you will start burning fat. But when it gets to 3, you are going to be a fat-burning machine, okay? <laughs> and so it's important to get that insulin levels down. For example, I had a patient just about a month ago, a young lady who was exercising with a personal trainer an hour and a half a day intensely. She was on my ketogenic diet but wasn't following it. She was just kind of following it for a while and then not following it. So uh, she was losing weight, and then she stopped. And I said, well, let's check your insulin levels. I checked her insulin levels, and it wasn't below 10. It was 41. I said, there's no way you're going to burn fat, even if you exercise and if you keep eating the way you're doing, because you're eating some garbage or starch or sugar. Garbage is simply too many carbs. It's like garbage to the body. And so sure enough, we tightened her diet down. We got her fats up to 70%. We lowered her protein a little bit because if you eat too much protein, it can can actually raise sugar levels. So she was eating way too much protein. And 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 then we lowered her carbs back down to 20. And all of a sudden, we checked her um, insulin levels the next month, and they'd come down to seven from 41. Unbelievable. And she started burning fat again. So it just shows you that one of the most powerful triggers for weight gain and not losing weight is high insulin levels. But there's also sex hormones that come into play, thyroid that comes into play. So many people out there, 40% of people have low thyroid, but it's not been picked up by their doctors. They're running the wrong test. They're not checking free T3 levels or reverse T3 or TPO levels. They're just checking a TSH. And like I say, if your thyroid is sluggish, you're, it's going to be very hard to lose weight. So once we get these hormones in balance, especially that thyroid hormone, but also many times the sex hormones, because if a woman's menopause is around 50, 48 to 52, she's going to be having um, you know, hormone fluctuations, estrogen, FSH is going to be high, progesterone is going to be low, testosterone is going to be low, and it's going to unleash these ravenous food cravings like when she was pregnant. You know how women crave pickles and all these weird foods? Well, when women go through menopause, they, become, they crave carbs and sugars and chocolate when they go through that menopause. And so what I find is not only is it important to put them on the ketogenic diet, it's important to balance their thyroid, to get them on either a good nutritional supplementation or a natural thyroid or compounded thyroid that's going to boost their free T3, that's going to boost their metabolic rate so that they're going to burn fat. And if you have cold hands and cold feet, I'm telling you, you most likely have a low or sluggish thyroid. If you have dry skin, constipation, if the lateral part of your eyebrow is missing, guess what? Your thyroid's low. And you're going to your doctor, and he's not running the right thyroid. He's most likely not doing the uh, comprehensive thyroid testing that needs to be done. So it's interesting how it all works so beautifully when you simply put the patients on the right program for weight loss, which is the ketogenic diet. I believe it is the healthiest, safest, best way to lose weight long-term and short-term as well as the right hormonal mixture, especially that thyroid. Because like I said, uh, the reports and the research is showing now, approximately 40% of Americans have low thyroid. You say, why is there such an epidemic and doctors aren't treating it? It's because there's so much toxicity in the environment. Because we're drinking chlorinated water, it interferes with thyroid. Because we're using fluorinated toothpaste, it interferes with thyroid. Because we're eating brominated bread from most every restaurant has bread that contains bromide, it interferes with thyroid. Then we're drinking out of plastic bottles that have phthalates, it interferes with thyroid. And so you see how it goes on and on and on. There's just uh, people that are overweight usually have a sluggish or low thyroid that's not being addressed. So... Um you know, we've, I've done a few shows on thyroid. I think it's really important because I agree with you. It's not tested properly. But, you know, even patients will come in and say, well, my thyroid's been ruled out. So can you go over again those tests that people should ask Absolutely. for? Absolutely. feel like it's and still an issue? Yes. 
Yes, absolutely, because I run a battery of tests on thyroid. Well, of course I check the TSH. That's the main test that endocrinologists run. I check a free T3, which is the unbound T3, which T3 is four times more active than T4. If that T3 is low, less than three, you're going to need some thyroid. And I check a free T4. So I check a free T4, a free T3. I check a reverse T3. Now, a reverse T3 is a test, and the reverse T3 binds to the T3 receptor, and it blocks T3 from binding. So the higher your reverse T3, the more T3 you need. And if you have chronic disease, if you have obesity many times, you have high reverse T3s. If you have any mitochondrial problems, with your mitochondria of your, of your body or chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, usually you have high reverse T3. And very rarely does anyone uh, check free T, uh, reverse T3. Also TPO and autoantibodies, antithyroglobulin. So many people have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and an autoimmune thyroiditis. And if you do have that, you have to avoid gluten. We find gluten sensitivity And uh, uh, over 90% of people with Hashimoto's are autoimmune thyroiditis. And many times we can correct the low thyroid by simply avoiding the gluten. And then um, those are probably the main tests along with the TSH. So the TSH, the free T3, the free T4, the reverse T3, the TPO, and the antithyroglobulin antibodies are the keys. And so when when you do this with people and you look at their hormones and then you put them on this diet, how long do they need to stay on it? Everyone's different. Uh, most people, women, lose about one to two pounds a week. Men, uh, many times, two to three pounds a week. And men lose more weight or lose more faster because they have more muscle mass. The more muscle mass you have, the faster you're going to lose. But if a person has, um, you know, 100 pounds to lose, they're going to need to be on it for at least one to two years. And again, it's a healthy diet. It's, it, it, um, it supplies all their nutrients that they need, and uh, it's just taking away their sugars and most of their carbs. And some patients, see, I've been doing this with patients for years. I've been, I started doing the ketogenic diet, treating my advanced cancer patients. And I found out it was the best program for advanced cancer because it, it stops giving cancer its fuel, which is sugar. And so I found out these patients started living. They started living longer, healthier. They burned their belly fat off. They felt great. They were more energetic. And when I checked their blood, their blood was amazingly healthy. And so I've had patients on this for years that are cancer patients that are now that have been living with cancer and not fueling cancer. The cancer many times goes into a survival state instead of a thriving state. So I've taken this program now to not just my can- advanced cancer patients. I put most all my type 2 diabetics on it. And many times we can reverse type 2 diabetes within a few months, as well as my wet- obesity patients and many of my autoimmune patients and many of my heart disease patients and, uh, so it- and dementia patients. So it's it- it- Parkinson's patients. It- it- there's so many patients that do so well in this ketogenic program. Well, you know, it, the more that we learn about food and how it affects our health and every disease you just mentioned is what people are afraid of. They're afraid of cancer. They're afraid of dementia. They're afraid of diabetes. It makes sense to me that we should be eating well just to avoid those things. Absolutely right. And, you know, the key common denominator in these diseases is sugar, excessive carbs, excessive starches. It fuels these diseases as well as, again, we have to throw in those inflammatory fats and excessive meats. So, again, it's, it's a simple program, highly effective, and it's a program that some people can follow the rest of their lives and, and stay very healthy and resistant to most diseases. I had a lady back uh, a few years ago that had metastatic breast cancer to her bones, and she was only given a short time to live. She had done chemo and all that. Nothing had helped. She had seen me a, a few years ago. And I put her on the ketogenic diet for advanced cancer, and I told her this is how she's going to have to eat for the rest of her life. Well, we gave her recipes for, you know, salads and soups and smoothies and with lots of fats in them, healthy fats. And uh, her cancer, literally, uh, when she had a PET scan, they said, these cancers that were in your bones and your ribs and your spine, we don't see them. There's just scar tissue there. 
And now you're in remission. Now, I, I can't say the ketogenic diet clears cancer, but all I can say is it takes the fuel away from cancer. And this, this patient said, listen, this diet is so easy. I can easily follow this the rest of my life. It's worth it to be resistant to cancer and live healthy the rest of my life by just following this program. Well, it's uh, it, it's not the first time on this show we've talked about the the keto diet and and cancer, and um, and other diseases as well. And I think that the main thing is um, we should try to avoid those. And hopefully, you know, instead of having fifty percent of the population or more being obese, we can turn that around and and get people healthier, so that we just don't end up in those situations and having to go Absolutely. through that stress. Yeah, absolutely right. And I tell people, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And it's interesting that cancer's favorite food is sugar, and that's why when we do PET scans, we introduce a radioactive tracer that's uh, linked to sugar, and that's how the cancers show up. They gobble up the sugar, and the cancers show up as bright splotches on the PET scan because they're taking up the sugar. See. So, so many doctors, when uh, oncologists, when patients come in for their chemo, they have donuts and cakes and milkshakes and cu- uh, cupcakes and things in the office for them while they're taking their chemo so they don't lose weight, not realizing that they're feeding their cancer a feast. Well, you know, it's, it's uh, something I've seen as well as when, when people are, are sick and losing weight, they're told to, you know, have lots of sugar to keep their weight up and then it just seems counterproductive because then they're continuing down that rabbit hole of being sick. You're absolutely right. You're inviting inflammation. Sugar inflames the body. And one of the biggest triggers of inflammation that people do not realize is high insulin levels. When your insulin levels are high, you are inviting inflammation and disease into your body. And that's why I check those insulin levels, get that level down, and uh, it's amazing how so many diseases start to uh, diminish or be relieved or go away by simply lowering that insulin levels by the ketogenic diet. Um, well, I hope that everybody listening can at least take something away from this if it's not the healthy fats or looking at sugar or um, diving into the whole diet just as prevention, something anti-inflammatory. Um, is there a way that people can get a hold of you or your books if they want more information? They can get my books in most every major retailer or bookstore out there, uh, Books A Million, Barnes & Nobles. They can go to my website at Dr. Colbert, that's D-R-Colbert, C-O-L-B-E-R-T dot com, and get it. But it's, Or they can get it on Amazon.com. There's many ways to get it. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. This was a really informative episode. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure, and I hope uh, that I shared some information that can help your listeners. I think so. I want to thank everybody for listening today. Just be sure to make today a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Please join Dr. Rebecca Risk again next Monday at noon Eastern Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. We'll talk more next week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the